What's up guys? It's your girl Frisk Me Good, your favorite fashion designer and fashion icon. And welcome back to my channel where we talk all things fashion. So today we're gonna be continuing my new series, So Nostalgic, where we talk about iconic fashion brands and fads that made a significant impact on pop culture. In this series, we explore the rise, the fall, or the comeback of fashion empires that made their mark on history. In the early 2000s, a seemingly innocent trend swept through middle schools and high schools, captivating the attention of teenagers and sparking controversy among parents and educators alike. I'm talking about the infamous sex bracelets. When sex bracelets came out, I remember hearing about them as early as grade school. One day, I was wearing jelly bracelets that I got from the prize counter at Dave & Buster's. When I went to school proudly sporting my trendy neon bracelets, one of my classmates pointed out that it was called a sex bracelet. I was shocked, but I was also fascinated with the meanings behind each of the colors. But at the same time, I never really came to a clear conclusion on each of the meanings because of course, there was no social media or even Google back then to aid my understanding of the trend. But today, we're going to be unpacking the obscure history of sex bracelets, the nostalgic yet scandalous fad that captured the nation. In this episode, we'll be uncovering the truth behind this mysterious Y2K rumor and the origins behind it. With all that being said, let's dive in. Let's set the scene. It's the early 2000s, a time of low-rise jeans, chunky highlights, and MySpace profiles. Amidst this era of budding social media and evolving fashion trends emerged a craze that quickly captured the attention of adolescents across the globe, jelly bracelets. The fashion accessory has been around since the 1980s and rose to popularity when stars such as Madonna started wearing them. In the late 1990s, the bracelets came back into vogue, and they gained additional status in the 2000s as everything from the 1980s became cool again. New pop stars at the time, like Avril Lavigne and Pink, will also be seen sporting the retro trend. The seemingly innocent rubber bracelets came in a variety of vibrant colors and were often worn stacked on the wrist, creating a colorful and trendy accessory. During a resurgence of popularity in 2003, jail bracelets became the subject of a widespread urban legend, linking them to a supposed sex game. Though many teens wore the jelly bracelets as inexpensive fashion accessories, some teens and pre-adolescents, including elementary school students, subsequently dubbed them as sex bracelets. The rumor mill went into overdrive with various interpretations of what each color bracelet meant, ranging from innocent acts like hugs and kisses to more mature activities. The origins of this color-coded trend can be traced all the way back to the 1970s, as the theme of young people saturating innocuous objects with secret sex codes isn't a new thing. Though the present incarnation focuses on cheap colorful bracelets, sexual themes that existed 40 years ago would employ pool tabs from soft drink cans and labels from beer bottles. The notion of a desirable outcome came as a form of repayment for the skill it took to remove the label without tearing it. Some boys saw it as a sexual good luck charm, believing an untorn label indicated its remover would get laid soon. Conversely, teen girls viewed the accomplishment as a proof to their purity, with intact labels proclaiming their virginity. This trend would later transcend into the world of fashion to something called the handkerchief code. Also known as the hanky code, bandana code, and flagging is a system of color-coded cloth handkerchiefs or bandanas that rose to popularity in the LGBTQ community for non-verbally communicating one's interest in sexual activities and fetishes. The color of the handkerchief itself would identify a particular sexual preference, while the pocket it's worn in would identify the wearer's preferred role. Excuse me, could I ask you about these? What about them? What are they for? Well, a light blue hank in your left back pocket means you want a blowjob. Right pocket means you give one. The green one left side says you're a hustler, right side you're a buyer. The yellow one left side means you give gold in the shower, right side you receive. The red one oh, means you say anything you want. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go home and think about it. I'm sure you'll make the right choice. The modern hanky code is often reported to have started in New York City around 1970, when a journalist for the Village Voice joked that instead of simply wearing a set of keys on one side or the other, it would be more efficient to subtly announce their particular sexual preferences by wearing different color handkerchiefs. 
However, other sources attribute the expansion of the trend to marketing efforts by the Trading Post, a San Francisco department store for erotic merchandise. They will promote the handkerchiefs by printing cards listing the meanings of various colors. Other sources claim that Alan Selby, founder of Mr. S Leather in San Francisco, created the Hanky Co. with his business partners at Leather and Things in 1972. Their bandana supplier inadvertently doubled their order and the code would help them sell the extra colors they had received. Around 1980, Bob Damron's address book published a yearly chart with the meaning of each color handkerchief. And soon, the code would make its way into popular culture with appearances in erotic films and even music videos. Then, in late 2003, the media picked up and distributed the sex bracelet story, prompting investigations into the colorful accessory. The trend sparked significant concern among parents, educators, and even some health professionals who feared that it trivialized serious issues surrounding consent and sexual activity among teenagers. The rumors were prominent enough in Alachua Elementary School in Gainesville, Florida that the principal banned the bracelets to avert disruption and inappropriate comments about them. A few schools in states such as Illinois and Ohio will follow suit and ban the bracelets as well. Joanne Hipshire, a principal at Malabar Middle School in Mansfield, Ohio, said, quote, It's about the disruption of the school day. Students were spending too much time worrying about who had them and who had been snapping them. But in other parts of the country, teens will say no one they know calls them sex bracelets. Kelly Agarian, a 17-year-old at the time from Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey, who served as a consultant for Teen Research Unlimited, said, quote, It's kind of outrageous and ridiculous. I think the media is making an issue out of nothing. The effectors of these early bans did not insinuate that the rumors were true. However, some later media reports suggested that they may have been generating a moral panic. What's up? So were those, like, the bracelets that mean, like, you do stuff with guys? Oh, these? I've heard certain colors mean you've done, like, certain things. Like, are the rumors true? Yeah, what if they are? Oh my god, Jess, that's so scandalous. Have you? I mean, I don't kiss and tell. Jessica Lynn! My god, you're a yellow girl! What are you talking about? Lexi's mom called me and said that those jelly bracelets you wear mean you do stuff with boys. Those rumors aren't real. Someone just made that up. You're grounded. <sighs> no computer, no MySpace, no LimeWire for a full week. What the fuck? The reason they gave for banning jelly bracelets was not the fear that students may have been having sex because of them, but the concern that they exposed children to sexuality prematurely. Since some students as young as third grade were able to discuss jelly bracelets and the acts they represented. They would say that exposure to these ideas at a young age can desensitize children and cheapen later intimate relations. Most experts agree that this was too young for children to be fixated on sexuality or to be sophisticated about mature acts. The British press will report on the supposed meanings of the bracelet colors in 2005. So what does a purple wristband represent? Well, take it easy, boys. It's only kissing. So it turns out that what every colour means varies around the country, and most people agree purple, I've got a purple one there, yeah, purple, uh, means snogging. Uh, first, though, I want to know what kind of parent lets their children wear these. As I mentioned at the beginning of the programme, we can't call them by their proper name because TV rules ban me from saying a particular word that rhymes with flag, uh, begins with S and is synonym, syno a synonym for sex, and it's not slag, by the way. Uh, so we'll call them sex bands. Uh, you can buy them in any number of high street accessory stores for pocket money prices. Ours were, were 30 pence each. And I'm told thousands of primary school children are wearing them. But these aren't sweet little friendship bracelets. Oh, no. Because, as I said, each colour denotes a different form of sexual activity. Uh, black here, that means uh, full sex. OK. Uh, blue, is, uh, blue is for oral sex, girl and boy. Uh, pink uh, is, is, uh, pink is uh, give us a flash, as we've done before. Yeah. And brown uh, means toss your salad. How do they work? Well, it's a bit like truth or dare, cross with spin the bottle. If a boy snaps the grey band your little girl is wearing, she's supposed to let him have sex with her outside. Grey stands for outdoor sex. If he snaps her glow-in-the-dark band, she's up for letting him use sex toys on her. Now, we got all this information from a website called, well, I'll call it flagbands.co.uk. Uh, 
And newspapers are up in arms about these little bands, but oh, I don't know, is there anything to worry about? I mean, I can't believe there are many ten-year-old girls out there who would let a random boy use a sex toy on her just because he snapped her band. I mean, what flaming planet are we on that we are allowing our children to wear these things that I've just, I'm just going down the list? Light blue. Be careful how you say it, because there's kind of difficult ones. <laughs> Light blue means anal. I mean, for the love of God, these kids are ten years old. I didn't even know what that Yeah, well, and was. I don't even repeat it either at this time of day. But I cannot, for the life of me, understand why any parent would allow their children to wear Well, they might not things. know. Is, is, is... For many teenagers at the time, wearing these bracelets would become a form of social currency, with peer pressure and curiosity driving their participation in the trend. Adolescents are often drawn to trends that offer them a sense of belonging and identity. The lore of sex bracelets provided a way for them to navigate social norms and explore their own sexuality in a relatively safe manner. The code would evolve into a game called Snap, where if a person breaks a jelly bracelet off the other person's wrist, they get a sexual act in return. According to Urban Dictionary, in the original game, the player would choose a bracelet from the person who wore it based on its color and pull it until it snaps. The bracelet may only be removed by manually breaking it without the aid of scissors, nail clippers, pocket knives, etc. If the snapper loses their grip on a bracelet and it snaps back against player 2's arm without breaking, no sexual act will be initiated. But if the snapper succeeds in breaking the bracelets, they may perform the act signified by the color of the bracelet, as agreed upon by the game's participants. The person wearing the bracelet may opt to redeem the broken accessory as a sex coupon at a later time, but it may only be used once. The game will later have many variations, with one of them being called Tug of War, where the players pull link bracelets in opposing directions until one of them breaks. The player whose bracelet broke may then engage with the other player in the signify act by the broken bracelet's color, or an act previously agreed on by the players before the start of the game. Another variation called handcuffs involves a bit of a bondage twist, where player one chooses two bracelets of different colors to create a pair of handcuffs that they can then slip on the wrists of player two. Player two must then escape from the handcuffs by pulling their wrists apart in opposite directions until one of the bracelets breaks. Well, folks, I don't know, every day there's a new wildest story for these kids. In a middle school in Florida, uh, they've been banned from wearing rubber sex brace bracelets because each color stands for a different sex act. And kids made up a game they call Snap, where the boys break the bracelet off the girl's wrist, and then you have a coupon for one of these acts. Now, I personally, <laughs> I think it's a disgrace that I'm no longer in high school. But, <laughs> uh, well, you know what? This is just like... This is just like gay guys used to put handkerchiefs in their back pocket. Right. You know, I had a fuchsia one, which meant that I was into fellatio and scrabble. <laughs> Some accounts even say the snap game occurred at parties, held for the purpose of breaking the bracelets, making them similar to contemporary rumors of rainbow parties. A gathering where girls wearing different shades of lipstick supposedly take turns giving BJs to their male counterparts, leaving behind an array of colors. Have yeah. your kids talked to you about rainbow parties? No, what's a rainbow party? Mm, I'm sorry to, to tell you, you do need is. to know what a okay. rainbow party is. It's not, it's not happy little elves and fairies. It's starting in junior high, and they're very popular now. They're oral sex parties. Oh my in God. In which each girl is given a different color lipstick, and the boys go around and receive oral sex from all the girls with a different lipstick. So then they end up with rings of lipstick around their penis, and the guy with the most rainbow Ooh. colors no. on his penis wins. Whatever wow. he wins, I don't know, I guess he wins a lot of oral sex that night. That's shocking. The rainbow party hysteria, much like sex bracelets, would cause mass panic over color lipstick. According to sex educators at the time, there was no evidence of even one rainbow party ever taking place. The sex bracelet lore would eventually reach a global level, making its way back to British media in 2009, in which the bracelets were allegedly named shag bands. Shag bands, should we bring those back? Shag bands! Yeah. No, but didn't they sort of um, come back as, wait, what are shag bands? Do you remember those things where you had to loop them together and if someone snapped them, it'd be like, we have to have sex, and it was like, no. See, our generation's messed up. The word shag is also great. Similar stories were circulated widely in Brazil during the 2009-2010 summer, where the bracelets were referred to as pulserias do sexo, 
In March 2010, a 13-year-old girl in Brazil was essayed by three teenage boys after one of them snatched the bracelet she was wearing. The police stated that the crime was motivated by the use of sex bracelets. While many isolated incidents occurred in other countries, middle school and high school kids from all across the US would typically express shock that adults would think they were actually obeying this code. They will often express disappointment that their elders failed to understand the bracelets are no more than a cool fashion accessory that attracted a silly rumor. Though many kids would hear about the urban legend before the media threw it at them, those exposed to this snippet of schoolyard lore in the wild received it as nothing more than a giddy everybody knows fact. And for parents, like just because your kid is wearing those bracelets doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing them. I mean, this game is normally played with who are sexually active so don't overreact just because your kids are wearing them and I don't really think it's a big deal just because you're wearing them I mean they're just colorful bracelets I normally don't hear anything about people really doing what um, people snap like doing what they wanted so I mean it's not really a big deal it's just something silly that people do and I guess it's just kind of I don't know <laughs> it's just I wouldn't get too worked up just because your kid's wearing them. It's not really a big deal. Even the mechanics of the activity alone would discourage one from participating in the act. As many people, including myself, remember it would take a mighty force to break a jelly bracelet depending on where you got yours. The greatest concern over sex bracelets appeared not to be that anyone was going to engage in any real redeeming, but the fact that children at the time were far too young to be entertaining such thoughts that were being exposed to them. Today, people finally remember the fad, and jelly bracelets can be purchased at a multitude of online retailers. Although its origins are controversial, the accessory is now seen as a flamboyant fashion statement again with no association to its raunchy history. Looking back, it's clear to see that sex bracelets were more than just a fashion statement. They were a reflection of the complex interplay between peer pressure, adolescent curiosity, and societal views towards sexuality. Well, there you have it folks, the fascinating yet controversial history of sex bracelets in the early 2000s. Researching this topic really took me down a rabbit hole full of surprises at every turn. I mean, I had no idea this fad was even a thing outside of America. It's amazing how one code can transcend generational trends and evolve into something new every few decades. But guys, be sure to let me know in the comments below if you remember this trend or if you have any experiences with wearing or even breaking them. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment letting me know what fad or fashion empire you want to hear about next. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so we can talk all things fashion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!